when done properly, the internet, screens, and particularly social media can provide five essential elements of adolescent well-being. A sense of control over one's environment, individuation, self-expression, a connection to others, and acceptance. And then there is the abyss. Welcome to App Appropriate, a podcast designed to give you a little taste into the positives and negatives of the most popular social media apps so that you and your most importance can make more informed, healthy, and safer choices when it comes to interacting through your screens. I'm your host, Joe Langford. Note that I said safer, not safe. Interacting through screens with other humans contains a degree of natural risk, just like real life. And I believe that education leads to empowerment, and I hope this information helps add a degree of safety, social responsibility, and good digital citizenship to your social networking and the conversations you have about it with your family. Today's episode is about vault apps. Vault apps are camouflaging apps, which are used to store and hide personal messages, photos, and videos. Typically, these apps are used to store and hide things from parents. Vault apps often are themselves disguised as something else, most often a calculator app. Some of them can even actually function as a calculator while also keeping Shaka content protected. Vault apps are easily accessible and are also referred to as photo vaults, hidden apps, or ghost apps, and most are free. Data stored or hidden inside a vault app will not be accessible in the phone's photo gallery or the app where the photos and videos are normally stored. Some of the app names are more obvious, such as Private Photo Vault, Gallery Lock, or Hide It Pro. Others can be more obscure, such as the Super Populator Calculator Percentage. This is one of the ones that poses as a typical calculator app, and in fact it actually functions like one as well, but when the kid enters a specific code into the app, they can hide nude or inappropriate pictures, notes, contacts, and other info and passwords for free. For an additional 99 cents, they can store files and have access to a hidden internet browser. Audio Manager is another. It appears to manage music files, though actually contains a lock screen behind which users can hide messages, photos, videos, and other apps. And Vaulty also stores and hides photos and videos away from parent eyes and snaps a photo of anyone who tries to access the app without the proper password. Vault apps have been around for about a decade and have remained moderately common amongst kids who feel the need to hide things from their parents. The most common profiles I've encountered in my experience working with kids who hide things from their parents are 1. Kids who think their parents are too controlling or strict or invasive, and 2. Kids who are legitimately up to trouble. Now, most adults may think one does not need an app to hide things if one doesn't have things to hide, but that's not necessarily always true. There are many situations in which kids feel their parents are too controlling or strict or invasive, but just because they feel that doesn't make that necessarily true either. Of course, I think those things can and do happen, and young people deserve, and in fact need, a degree of privacy as they get older. Parents who are overly controlling can stifle a child's development and a sense of agency, independence, and trust in the world by controlling every aspect of their lives. There are also situations in which parents may be doing normative, healthy, age-appropriate monitoring, but the kid feels like they're being oppressed. This can be a natural reaction during the teen years, playing the you-don't-trust-me card as a hallmark of adolescence. A couple of points for parents. Some of the felt oppression on the part of our kids can be staved off by clear and open communication, by explaining to our kids why and how we're monitoring them. Regarding the you don't trust me card, it can help kids to explain that, like with learning how to drive a car, that you're going to be in the passenger seat with them while they learn to drive their smartphone. Even older teens can appreciate that comparison. If we can be upfront and clear with our expectations around age-appropriate monitoring, then we can lower the amount of angst and resistance from the kids. With regard to the second category, the kids who are actually seeking trouble, that can be a different situation. You know your kid better than anyone, perhaps even themselves sometimes. If your kid bucks against rules, pushes the limits, or tends to be less than honest, then they're probably going to do that with their screens as well. So what can you do about vault apps? Know what's on your kid's phone. 
Creating an Ask to Buy situation allows you to screen apps before they're downloaded to your kid's device. I also encourage parents to develop a download and delete system. In my house, my kids' devices have parental controls preventing them from downloading or deleting any apps without coming to me first, presenting their case, and having a conversation. Since most Vault apps act as decoys that are typically not functional, they're often downloaded as a duplicate to an already functioning app. So if you spot a duplicate app, such as more than one calculator, it can be a sign that a Vault app may be being used. And look for warning signs that your kid is using a Vault app like quickly turning off their phone when you come near, changing or refusing to give you their passcodes, and a sudden increase in device use. Very few apps pose a danger in and of itself, but Vault apps not only set kids up for problems, but can also be a sign of problems. There are very few legitimate reasons for adults to use a Vault app, and way fewer for minors. Regardless of the child's motivation, parents who find Vault apps on your kid's phones can assume their kid is purposely hiding things, probably pictures. So I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you all that typically any naked image of anyone under the age of 18 can be defined as child pornography. There's also a related category of similar apps called secret apps. Cousins to Vault apps, secret apps deal in potentially negative behavior other than hiding pictures from your parents. Hidden spy camera, for example, makes your phone look like it's not in use when it actually is. It disguises a camera as a wallpaper and allows the user to take a picture by tapping anywhere on the screen, theoretically without the photo's subject knowing they're being photographed. Yeah, I can't think of a positive, non-creepy use of that either. And hidden spy camera is an oddly named platform for an app that traffics in secrecy, but there are plenty of others with less obvious names. Second texting is another kinda obviously named app designed to allow users to add a second customizable number on their device that can be used for texting, as well as sending and receiving photos. But the winner for the most obvious name in a secret app category is Fake GPS, which allows users to take a photo, tag it with a GPS identifier anywhere they like, and then send it. Market it as a way to trick your friends and show them you're in Rome when you're not. It could be used to prank your friends that you were backstage at the Rihanna concert, but it could also be used to be less than honest about whose house you tell your parents you're spending the night at. Again, there's loads of versions and variants of these apps, as well as others. Most of them are marketed for entertainment, and some of them are actually designed for that purpose, so it doesn't necessarily mean your kid is up to no good if you find them on their phone. It is human nature, after all, to want some privacy as we mature, We've all had things we want to keep to ourselves, or at least separate from our parents. And that being said, there's reason for concern associated with apps like these, and it's good to be both aware of them and to see them as a call for conversation. Because if kids are using apps like these, they're not going at social networking in a responsible way and are setting themselves up for problems. Thank you for listening. I'm Joe Langford. I'm a therapist, a sex and tech educator, and a dad, and I specialize in helping families navigate that intersection of adolescence, sexuality, technology, and behavior. More information about me and my work to promote healthy, positive, and safer sexual and social behavior, both online and off, can be found at my website, beheroes.net. The advice presented in this podcast is a form of education and is intended to provide general information about common though broad topics that impact underage people. Specific circumstances and facts may make said advice unsuitable and or other actions necessary for individuals. This podcast is meant to be an adjunct, not a replacement for IRL experience, professional advice, and good old-fashioned common sense. In addition, Much of the information included here can and most likely will change with time, culture, and the rapid development of technology. Beheroes.net does not seek nor accept any monetary gain or financial support from any social media platform mentioned. Beheroes.net is committed to providing quality consulting, coaching, product speaker, and contracted therapeutic services, advocacy, and resources to clients, visitors, customers, colleagues, and fans. Appropriate is produced by Beheroes.net.